Alrighty friends, so uh, I'm going to recommend using markers for this lesson. You can always use whatever art supplies you have at home. Like I said, you can use crayons, markers, colored pencils, watercolor paint, oil pastels. You can use those things in combination as well. But each week I'm going to show you how to use a different art supply and different things in combination. And this week we're just going to start out with markers. So I have a whole bunch of markers. I'm sure you guys do too. I, I, you know, it's sometimes it's hard to find the color you want when you have so many to choose from. And so what I recommend is for this art lesson, for example, I've got my drawing here ready to go. Um, but I also have this free draw paper here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to look for some colors and make sure I have the colors I want before I start coloring. Sometimes it just makes it easier. That way you don't have to be digging around through your markers to find what you're looking for. So I do part of this um, in real time like I am right now, and I do part of this in time lapse, which means it's going to go really fast. Time lapse is just of uh, reality speed it up um, so I'm not really moving that fast but just so you know um, I'm not expecting you to move that fast um, but it's gonna be something that makes this video a little bit uh, shorter and more fun to watch all right guys so I'm gonna go into time-lapse now and, and then I'm gonna come back and talk a little bit more before I work again here we go Alrighty guys, so as you can see, I have tested my colors. I came up with some patterns. I've got reds and blues and yellows and oranges and violets and just different things. It's really basically the same like colors of the rainbow, Roy G. Biv. Um, I also have some neutrals here. And so I'm gonna use all of these in some way, shape or form. And this extra paper I have here is for, you know, sometimes you still have to test colors or do you know decide which combinations work best for you another good reason to do this is because you'll say okay well this marker doesn't have as much ink as the other one you always want to choose the best markers for your projects guys as you can see i've got crayola i've got crazy art i've got colorations it doesn't matter what brand you're using but it does matter if your uh the color that you're using has enough ink so that it does a good job so i hope that you will test your colors and make sure you have the ones you want it's a good step um so i'm going to move on now to the coloring part and so i love this part it's really fun i hope you guys enjoy it too you can color these things any color you want it could be a purple yellow and green llama if that's what you want um but llamas in real life are usually white some of them are white and brown some are just brown they are, they come in all different patterns and colors. And so it's really fun. I hope you'll make choices that make your llama stand out against the background. So here we go, guys. So I'm gonna do some of these colors just right now to show you what I'm talking about. And then I'll do the rest in time-lapse before I come back and finish up at the end with a conclusion. So first things first, I really like the idea of making my mountains a, kind of an unusual color. Yes, some people make them green. Yes, some people make them brown or gray. I mean, that's all fine, but I have this thing where I just want some purple mountains. So I'm gonna go into these purples and these pinks that I chose, and here's the purple and pink combo. I just think that's really pretty. And so, again, art is, you know, it's what you want it to be, and it's just really fun to make it up as you go along. So I am gonna start with my dark color, and I'm gonna start at the bottom of my mountain. And so, this is right on top of my grass. And so you see how I'm kind of making some marks that show the shape of the grass. And that's just because I don't wanna go over my nice, you know, spiky grass with a straight flat line because then I would be, you know, missing my grass. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm just gonna start with my straight lines. And so one thing I wanna say right away is, do you guys see what I'm doing here? This blue mat, this is a mat that is just an, a piece of like cardstock. It's like a poster board. And so it's something you can put underneath your artwork. And that way, if you go off the edge and you make a mark on something, you're not doing it on the table, guys. You're doing it on the paper. And so you'll notice that this is a brand new one. Uh, and I'm going to get this thing really dirty over the next uh, nine months of art classes. And so it's okay. That's what it's for. So what I'm doing, you don't have to color your mountains this way. It's just a really fun effect. This is called ombre. And so I'm going to create a shaded mountain that goes from dark at the bottom. And in the middle, it's this nice, like medium purple. 
This is a way to color and make it look really, really cool. The black lines of the Sharpie are going to show through, which is one of the re really great reasons to color on top of Sharpie. So Sharpie is bold, shows up, and you don't have to worry about losing your drawing with the colors you choose. So I have now gone up a little bit here with this medium color. You see how I'm going back down into my dark color? It kind of blends it a little bit. Then I'm gonna go with my pink now. And this is my light color and I'm okay with that. I really like it. But you see when I overlap the pink over the medium color, it actually makes it a little more purplish pink. And so it's a way to get the blending. So I am now going up towards the top of my mountains and I'm gonna now go down over these colors also. See how much is going onto that mat? That's a good thing guys, because otherwise it'd be on the table. Markers are washable, most things are, but not everything. So it's just a good habit to put something underneath your drawing. So do you see what I'm doing now? I'm kind of outlining a little bit and then I'm gonna start going this way. So I'm moving a little bit fast, but you can always go as slow or as fast as you need to. But notice that I'm not scribbling. That's really what I want you to see. There is not a scribble on this thing. But what you do see is some mixing and blending. So I'm bringing this down onto my mountains, going up. And if I want to, which I do, I may go back with my medium color and bring that up a little higher. And I might even put some of these colors back here too, just so that it really looks like it's all part of the same mountain structure. It's cool, I like that, I think it's fun. So I'm just gonna add a little bit here and I'm gonna add a little bit more. And you can just really get those colors to blend a little bit and look fun and look neat. So it's okay if you overlap a little bit, it just, it does look cool. It looks really cool. I think it does, I hope you guys do too. All right, so as you can see, we're going from dark to light in those mountains. As you can see, I have gone over the edge of my llama a little bit, but guys, it's no big deal. Even though this is gonna be a white llama, I am gonna outline with gray, and the gray is a great way to show sh light and shadow, uh, but it's also just a nice way to kind of give a little bit of that edge, like it just kind of covers up. If you go over that edge a little too bit too much on any one side, it's a nice way to cover those things up. So because this is gonna be a white llama for me today, I'm just gonna add this gray now, just to show you what I mean. So the gray is like a shadow, okay? So it's not a gray and white llama, it's a white llama, and the gray is representing a shadow. Now you could do this shadow if you really felt like it, you could do it with another color. You could do it with blue, you could do it with pink, you could do it with purple. Remember, this is supposed to be a shadow on our white llama. And so it's okay if you have it a little bit darker in some places, like I'm gonna make its inside of its leg darker, like it's in shadow. And I'm gonna make the inside of this leg darker. Again, it's like a shadow. And I'm gonna just go ahead and let that be like that. And I think it already looks pretty cool. And I've only gotten started. So I know that I want my llama's ears to have a little pink in them, so I'm gonna do that. I'm gonna give them a pink nose, just for fun. And my llama's got some tan legs, just because they are cool animals, and this is a good way to show off some of the details. So these are my choices, guys. You might make different choices, and that is okay. I can't wait. Hopefully you'll send me some examples you say, hey, this is my drawing, Miss Kim. This is how it turned out. I would love to see it. It makes me so happy to see you guys thriving and making art and having a good time. That is what it's all about. So, all right, guys, I'm going to do the rest of this in time lapse. And I think this looks pretty awesome already. I've only gotten started. All right, here we go.
check it out. Uh, I'm pretty happy with my drawing. I think it turned out pretty cool. Uh, I went for some unusual combinations of colors, but I thought it would be really fun. Like my llama is kind of a natural color, but my background is sort of unnatural, but it's, it's, there's parts of it that are kind of both abstract and realistic. So it's just kind of fun. It shows you that you can do whatever color combinations you like. Testing your colors ahead of time lets you make, you know, good choices when the right time comes. Also having a mat so you're not going to get any marks on the table is also really good. So I like to sign my drawings right here in the bottom corner with a Sharpie, but sometimes people should sign them on the back. Now, if you're going to sign them on the back, use a marker like this, something that's not going to go through the paper. If you will notice, you'll see that the Sharpie kind of goes through sometimes. So for example, I'm going to sign my name like this. Those are my initials in 2021. Um, and uh, you can also sign it on the front. If you sign it on the front, however, do it with a Sharpie. You want that to look nice and neat and you want it to not be enormous, right? You don't want to write it across the top or anything like that. It's sometimes nice just to put it in the bottom corner. So guys, this was super fun. I hope you enjoyed it. I know I did. This is the first lesson of our 2021 school year, and I am so looking forward to a whole year of great art lessons with you guys. If you like this video, please uh, like it on YouTube, subscribe. That's so important. And if you let me know in class or if you email me, I will send you one of these magnets. This is an art sub magnet. I have a bunch left. I've, some, I've already mailed a bunch out. I've mailed them as far as Australia. So guys get on to uh, liking and subscribing and letting me know. And I will send one of these to you as well. They hold up your artwork on the fridge. They just look cool. All right, guys, that's it for today. I had a great time drawing with you, and I will see you next time. <music>